Welcome to the ASX edition of Trade the Trend, a weekly video discussing where the stock market is heading. This video is going to focus on the ASX 200. I'm also going to have a look at gold, and I've also got an emerging opportunity which is just starting to happen, which you're not going to want to want to miss. So make sure you stick around for that. I'm going to cover the S&P 500 in a separate video. I'll leave a link for that in the description section below. As always, this is general commentary. It doesn't take your personal situation into account. With all of that said, let's get into our first chart. So kicking off with the ASX 200. And really, it, look, this is, a, this is a, a really interesting setup, what's been going on over the last, last few weeks. So as we've discussed in the last couple of weeks, three weeks ago, we had the, the false break to the downside. Market broke support, no follow through selling, swift rebound back up to the upper end of the range. And then this week, the market has has punched to the top side, breaking above resistance. Now, last week I was saying that I thought that the, the, the classic formation with the market up at the top of the range would have been for, for some sort of consolidation below resistance, and then a, then a punch to the upside. That that would have looked nice. Would have been the nicest nicest look at this chart. But of course, the market doesn't always do what I think would be be nice. And, uh, and what, what we had midweek was we had the Reserve Bank saying there'd be no interest rate rise and the market has, has popped on that, that announcement. Now we find it coming back, pulling back just beneath this resistance. So it raises a question, was, was that a false break on the upside? And my bias on this, my, my, my bias, my take on, on what's going on with this market is that I think it's setting up for higher levels. And I think the path of least resistance is, is slowly shifting to the, to the upside. And what, what's common, like from a, when a market goes, so here are our moving average, you've got the 50 and the 100 day moving averages. When a market cycles from beneath those moving averages to above those moving averages, and it does so reasonably quickly, you often get a pullback towards the moving averages. Not dissimilar to what we saw in this period um, around May. We had the strong rally above, then we had a move back towards moving averages. And this occasion it went back below, but quite often a market, a bullish market at least, will pull back towards the averages and then rally again. So I'm wondering whether we, this, is, this still needs to do some work, some consolidation. Moving averages catch up. Maybe there's some more ebb and flow before we can see another, another test to the, to the upside. But I think while the moving averages are positive, while the market's above the moving averages, uh, I think we need to, I think, think, um, I think the play is to favour the upside. I think that stocks are, are setting themselves up for a test of these, this all-time high, up around uh, 7,650. We've got the triple top resistance there. That's going to be a big level for the market to, to ultimately break at, at some point, whether it be um, sooner rather than later, we'll have to see. But I think a retest of that is, um, is in the makings. I want to be long stocks. I want to be long ASX stocks, and I am. Um, that's, uh, that's the way I'm, I'm approaching this. And what's been interesting is I've been getting signals for a range of financial stocks over the last, oh, look, the last few weeks now. And some banks turned up. Well, one bank in particular turned up in the signals this week, which was which was interesting. So there's some really um, some some good setups which are starting to appear. Now, I'll give you an example. Well, it's not a, not an individual uh, financial stock, but it's an ETF. It's the it's the, the Van Eck Australian Banks ETF. And this is interesting because banks have been a real weight on the market over the last uh, really since um, since February. This um, when we had the banking crisis in the US, you know, that local local banks have taken a taken a hit as well, and you can see they've been been tracking below the the moving average for for a good part of this year. And just in the last last two three weeks, we've seen the um, this bank's ETF get back above the moving averages. The moving averages haven't crossed yet, but they're getting pretty close. So fifty days about to cross over the one hundred, and uh, and then this here is. Um, is potentially a is a, a basing formation of, of sorts. We've got the market compressed into into a range, like I'll probably probably draw the line there. We've got the the market compressed within a range, and now we're broken to the the upside. The risk I highlighted a, a few weeks ago was I was concerned maybe the market was going to break to the downside, and that would have been 
would have been a real weight on the ASX 200, but that isn't how this has played out. The break has come to the upside. And this is another reason why I say don't preempt which way a market's going to break because it doesn't always go the way that, in this case, I thought it was to the downside. It didn't go that way. But of course, that was okay because I wasn't positioned for it to break to the down, downside. You wait for the break and then you respond to it. So look, something interesting going, going on there, in these um, financial stocks. And uh, look, if, if you're interested in price-based signals, the sort of stuff which I'm looking at and which I talk about in these videos, I'm going to leave a special offer to my Motion Trader service in the description section below. Special offer for my viewers of the, uh, of the YouTube channel, just, just for you guys. And uh, it's, um, I think this is a really interesting time in the market. There are a lot of interesting signals that I'm seeing. So I think that this is a really good time to be focused on what's breaking out. Then you can make decisions about like what stocks you want to consider putting in your portfolio. But you need to see the breakouts. You need to see the momentum. Then you can make good informed decisions. Uh, jumping over to the small ordinaries, just a quick look at this. It's, um, it's been pulling back on, on Friday. And very much like I spoke about with the ASX 200, markets move that cycle from below the moving averages to above, they then often pull back and retest those, those averages. What we want to see here, we want to see whether this, um, whether this dip is bought. Buying the dip, really important sign of, of, a, of a healthy bull market or an emerging bull market. You need to see the dips being bought, not the rallies being, being sold. So I think... Uh, a level to watch, just casting an eye over this. You can see there's going to be some short-term support coming in around, uh, around, around, around this mark in here, around 2,850. You can see the market's done some work here back in, back in February. Again, there's some retest of this support, then test of it as resistance, coming back to it now. Also coincides with the moving averages. So it's a bit of a level to, I think, to, to keep an eye on for the for the near term. Um, I, th I think this could be a, a large basing formation like the Russell 2000 in the US. But as I was saying, we don't want to preempt a, a breakout. It hasn't happened. Maybe the market does break to the downside. At the moment, I think we give the benefit of the doubt to the upside, given we're above the moving averages and we're above support. So let's just see how this plays out over the next, over the next um, maybe over the next week or two. Now, if you're getting some value from this, please hit that like button. Please leave a short comment. Just, hey, thanks for the video. Just tells YouTube you're watching, you're engaging, and YouTube shows other people, which helps me heaps. So please do that. And also hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And come over and visit me at Motion Trader. Now, a quick look at, some, at, a, at, a, at a key commodity, gold. Everyone, a lot of people like to look at, look at this gold market. And we've had some positive price action over the last, last week in particular, but also over the last, really since, um, since early, early July, we've been getting some positive price action in gold. What we, saw, uh, what we saw in June, we got a break below some support, some short-term support, no follow-through selling. And when you don't get follow-through selling, it's always a sign that the path of least resistance is probably in the opposite direction. And we've seen that move back up. Above um, this, this um, previous support, which briefly became resistance, is now support again because the market's on the other side of it. So that's all encouraging for, for gold. And what's been also been encouraging just over the last, just really the last over the last week, gold's been able to rally despite the US dollar also having a having a bounce. So it's a, it's a sign of underlying strength in the gold market when it's able to rally. When the, the US dollar is rising, normally they they, um, they move in opposite opposite directions. Um, I think that look, I think I've been talking about the need for this following this this big rally from the um, October lows. I'm saying look, this market needs to do some work before we can consider the possibility of a of a breakout of this um, big overhead resistance at around uh, 2000, just below 2100. Uh, I, think, I think gold's done the bare minimum. It's done the bare minimum for to say, look, we've had a consolidation. That's ready to run again. This consolidation could continue to, to you know, make its way sideways for several more months. But I think it's done the bare minimum. So people interested in gold, maybe this is a, a point to, to put a toe in the water or, or, or slowly start to add some, some positions. 
A stock which is interesting, a local ASX stock, which I'm watching with a bit of interest, is Evolution Mines, EVN. Now, what's interesting about this? Now, now, firstly, this was a motion trader signal back in December. This is when the moving averages crossed and the, and the shares made a breaking up to a new, new high point. And, uh, and what, what's been interesting over the last few months is this market peaked, or this stock peaked in May, pull back towards support. You can see this, um, this blue shaded area here. They've been quite, been a technically active area for um, over the last, last year or so. And pulled back, had a, had a rally off it, pulled back again over the last couple of weeks, back towards these moving averages, just above support. So this is one of those possibly, one of those asymmetric moments where you can really see a case where your downside may not be particularly great, but your upside, if it starts to engage, could be quite good. So one of those gold stocks worth looking at, gold stocks are a bit of a mixed bag at the moment. Some look good, some don't look good. So it makes me wonder, maybe gold still has more to, more to play out. But look, there's, a, there's enough there. And given the asymmetry of this possible opportunity, look, it's one of those ones that might be worth, worth considering. Um, but look, better still, um, you know, as I was saying before, have a look at that offer motion trader in the description section and actually get these motion trader signals when they're when they're happening rather than when i you know, review a few stocks sometimes in these these videos and now look i'm going to have a look at copper and uranium next week uh, i'm going to run out of time this week because what i want to do i want to show you an opportunity that's just breaking out today it's 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 one i've been watching for ages and it's breaking out today so you, know, you guys you're the, you're the first to hear about it it is it is the um the, the Vanguard Asia X Japan ETF. So this is really an emerging market. It's an emerging Asia ETF because you take out Japan and really into emerging, emerging markets. And now I spoke about this a couple of months ago. The market had been compressing within this sideways uh, trading range after making a, making a significant low in October last year, had a strong rally, went into this sideways period. I love these sideways compressions because they often lead to terrific opportunities when you get the breakout, whichever way that may be. And uh, we've also had a case where the moving averages crossed back in January, then been gently rising during, during this sideways period. There's been a case of waiting. Had to be patient, have to wait for the breakout. I don't like it. Look, I've already said it. I don't want to preempt the breaks, um, but it's no preempting now because today we have got a breakout. And this is a strong breakout too. Breakout actually started to occur yesterday, but then we really got follow through buying today. At the time of recording at 3.10 on Friday afternoon, it's up 2%. So this is, this is a strong move. Now, um, and you look at where this, this, how far this fell. This is um, this ETF, these Asian markets said down. Let me just measure that out. It was a 33% bear market, peak to, peak to troughs, a big bear market, and we're starting to see that, that turn higher now. Um, what, what, like you always hear me talking about asymmetry in, in where we want to look for our opportunities. This is, this is about as asymmetric as, as it gets. So like one, 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 one scenario for playing this would be to just have an exit point back midway down in, into this range. So you look at the potential downside and then you look at the potential upside. You know, could this make its way back to the all-time high over the next, over the next year or so? I think the answer is yes. It might not, but it could. So lots of potential upside, um, limited potential downside. So a really interesting opportunity to, to check out and have a have a think about if that's the sort of thing that you like. So look, let's um, leave it there for this week. Thank you for joining me. Hopefully that's been interesting. Come and check out my offer at Motion Trader if you're not a member. I'd love to have you as a member. And I look forward to coming back and talking next week. Until then, bye for now.